Hi everyone and welcome again to another episode of SG Now. We bring you the latest community news and stories. I'm your host, Darren Lim. And I'm Evelyn. We are a partnership like Kaya Toast and Soft Boiled Eggs. Oh, I like that. Mm, like Brush and Easel, but more about that later. Mm, like Hacking and Retailing. Yeah, more about that later too. Like Vintage Record and Record Players. Like Darren and Evelyn. Ew, cringe. <laughs> well, speaking about partnerships, today's first story is about a reliable partner in home renovation. Imagine someone who'll pay most of the cost, replace worn-out fixtures, and help you get through the various difficulties brought about by the renovation process. Like death and taxes. Not so morbid, Darren. No, we're just talking about HDB here. HDB conducts the Home Improvement Program, or HIP, which gives aging flats a makeover with lifts on every floor thrown in. Our city Jodamic, who's going through the HIP right now, will tell us more. Hey, this is Darren with Singapore One, and today we'll be talking about the Home Improvement Program. The Home Improvement Program better known as HIP, is something created by HDB in order to help older flats improve their facilities such as waterproofing, tiling and sinks in toilets. It's completely optional and residents will have to co-pay a small fraction of the cost, but it's an offer that few can refuse. Now, let's talk to some residents. Beware, it might be a little noisy. I think it's financially it's useful because it's, it's cheaper than if you go private. Uh, because when HDB does it, it you know, it costs uh, lesser. It, it's better lah, it's better for you so you don't have to spend so much money. As you can see, they just did the first layer of the ground. HDB will first select a precinct for HIP. Residents of any one block will then vote on whether to go forward with it or not. If 75% or more of them agree, they will have six weeks to select which optional improvements they want. You can usually check out the options and available materials at your block's HIP Information Center. The actual renovation work on any one unit only lasts up to 10 days. In those 10 days, contractors will arrive, set up hoarding to protect your house from dust, and get to work. Essential works like replacement of pipes and repairs to spalling concrete go first, then the optional ones, and ease improvements last. The last that I renovated my house was when we bought it, which is actually 21 years ago. I think this entire uh, HIP is very well organised. I particularly appreciate the fact that they allow me to um, break up the renovation in two phases. So we'll get to do half of the home, which is two bathrooms first, and then the next phase followed by the other. Bathrooms, that's the catch. For those who want their bathrooms redone, you'll have to go downstairs to bathe for about two weeks. But don't worry, there's hot water. And now for my favorite part, the ease improvements. It's supposed to be enhancements for active seniors, but I'll let it slide. My family installed this grab bar in this bathroom for me. And now with HIP, I'll have another set in the other bathroom. And they will be replacing the ramps at the entrance of my house, which is a huge convenience. We don't notice the little things until they're gone, like ramps or being able to bathe in your own home. And that's why the HIP is not just an ordinary routine maintenance or renovation to me. Why don't you share your thoughts with me in the comments? And this has been Darmic with Singapore One, hoping to chat with you next time. Thank you, Darmic, for the story. Hey, your mom's home just went through this HIP program, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, and so now with the ramps all built up, it's much easier for the old folks. Definitely, and then she's been complaining about leaking faucets and dripping ceilings, you know, so it's high time that everything just gets a big makeover. Mm. And she's happy. And I think, you know, everything went um, much better than our DIY, your DIY project at home. 
Hey, uh, he, yeah, I, I may have uh, wrecked the bathroom, but at least I got the cabinet <laughs> up, right? Okay, okay, okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's turn our attention away from the scenes of destruction and think about something nice and creative instead. I created a very nice cabinet. Yes, but is it as nice as the paintings done by Mr... Hey, look, I followed the instructions and the doors actually stayed on the hinges. <clears throat> okay, okay, now... Joe, you might have seen this artistic soul roaming the streets of Katong well, uh, with his I motorbike. I actually followed the instructions and... Darren, shh. <laughs> his name is Zhu Hong and our city Joe Murat has been following him. I'm wandering in a car park behind Tanjong Katong Road, hoping to bump into local artist Zhu Hong, who's been spotted painting in this area for the past few days. He's not hard to spot, and while he's quickly and efficiently setting up, I manage to chat to him and get an invitation to see his studio. When I get there, my eye is immediately caught not by his paintings, but by the cherry picker he uses to get canvases stored high up. I laugh when he says it costs less than building a staircase. Originally from China, I came to Singapore in 1997. Since Singapore about 20 over years. Yeah, become full-time artist. In my time, 1990 something, all most of the uh, China mainland China people want to go overseas. So Singapore is uh, considered the easy place to go because they speak as Chinese. Yeah, I think so. But that time when I come to Singapore, actually people speak English. <laughs> yeah, you know the painter normally the, from a, a kid they, they like to paint. So, but when you before you go to university, your family, wherever people think better, you find a so-called of normal formal job. So I study architecture because they related with painting. Actually, one day I think ten years ago, before Chinese studio, I really remember very clearly. I'm sitting in the front of the desk. I think one day I'm lying. I'm lying on the bed. I will regret something. Why not? try to become an artist. At least I try. And his trying has paid off with successful solo shows in Beijing, Shanghai and Singapore. Uh, we did an exhibition for him in 2018 uh, of all his oil paintings. He also paints on the spot. It's very different style of painting, so we're attracted to that. And then he also paints uh, street scenes of Singapore, which uh, resonates with people living here. When you look at his paintings, you don't feel the distance from them. It's always very direct. He, he paints from the heart. There's nothing to hide. Why paint the streets in the building? Actually, it's a lot. I really like. I can feel the building. There's a lot of things from building. People, most people just see a building. Actually, to me, my eyes like an X-ray. Yeah? can see through the building, can see through the structure because my background is an architecture background. So you know that, you know exactly what it is. So you can change this one and change that, but it looks like that building. Yeah. So you have worked in watercolors yes. and also now you work predominantly oil. in oil. But I understand you also like less traditional forms of art. A lot of people ask me, come to my place to, to ask me to I said, no need to teach. It's exactly the same as a traditional way. Just use the stylus as a pen or a brush. This one is a canvas. Just find your own way to paint. So, Hong, when you aren't being an artist, okay, what do you do with your time? What are your hobbies? What are your interests? Okay, I like uh, watch movies, you know, from small kid. Like go to the cinema, but the feeling different because the movie is not a lot. Of the, I don't like the, the the scary the movie and the computer CG the movie. I like the, the blue sky normal life the movie. If you really ask me to choose one, I still like the 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 the, the Roma holiday. And favorite place? I, think I choose Italy Rome because the first European city I visit is Rome. The first thing I saw Rome is like I come up from the train station. Actually, I don't know the Colosseum meaning is what, but I know Colosseum. When I open the door, it's close to there. It's so impressive. It's so contrast with our Asian culture.
After spending time with Ju Hong, any idea I might have had of a moody, temperamental soul were completely thrown out of the window. He was a delight, a curious mixture of dedication to his art and wonder and joy in what he sees around him and in what he does. A man of simple pleasures, with an enthusiasm for life and a generous spirit that shines through in his work. As his gallerist said, he paints from the heart. I asked Yu Hong, what would he be if he could no longer paint? His answer was quick and simple. I wouldn't be happy. Thanks for the story, Morag. And now I miss you know, not paying attention during art class in school. I miss drawing, painting, sketching. Yeah, I miss doodling on my textbooks. <laughs> <laughs> and I miss old art uh, albums, you know, movie posters. Oh. oh, come on. You're just trying to be a hipster now. You, come on, you grew up with cassette tapes and CDs, right? Fine. I miss the art that came on CD covers and cassette covers. You know? oh, some of them were just photos. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, for those of you who appreciate album art and vinyl records, these things are now enjoying a comeback. Okay, if you miss those wonderful old pop songs like I do, you can head down to Curated Records to immerse yourself in nostalgia. That's right, City Joe Nicholas did just that. He might be half as old as some veneer records, but he enjoyed himself thoroughly with the make-believe nostalgia of the place. Hi, how's it going everybody? My name is Nicholas from SG1 and today we're going old school, visiting an old vinyl record store that's been around for a couple of years. So let's take a look and see what's interesting. Come on. Located in Northbridge Road, which is quite near the Sultan Mosque, is where you would find this amazing record store and it has a very unique aesthetic to it, so there's no way you can miss out on this. Upon entering the store, I was immediately greeted with a bunch of artists that I enjoy listening to so much and all their album covers, so it was a really, really pleasant surprise for myself. highlights for me here was that I was able to use their record player and for those who are unaware of how to utilize one the owner will actually be there to guide you and you know kind of give you a good taste of how it's like to own a vinyl own a record player and you can just sit back relax and you know just, just enjoy yourself over there it's one hell of an experience and good vibes good vibes only Vinyl records, you can actually get to touch it rather than whatever the stream, right? But then you don't really uh, own that uh, copy of the album. You buy it, then you really physically have it. And also the whole experience of um, just playing through an album, lah, sitting there. So it's this kind of engagement that I think people can really um, enjoy just for that maybe an hour. Because we are still a very brick and mortar shop, yeah, there's a lot of the considerations uh, to have it online, so it's easier for people to, to purchase. It's right here is a Fuji's album. It is an original vinyl record. And since I have a little record player at home, you know, in my little studio, I am definitely going to give this a good listen. I'm extremely happy with the service I got there. And uh, the place is a vibe, man. It's definitely a place worth checking out. We'll look forward to the next one, all right? Thank you, Nick, for that nostalgic journey. It's so good to know that real music is still alive today and youngsters like you know how to enjoy it. Oh, no, please don't start. What? Well, just because a song came out like 40, 50 years ago on a vinyl doesn't make it good. Well, I know someone who knows real music and who can set the record straight for us. 
And who's that? <laughs> well, our oldest and newest city jo, who is forever 21. She was a very popular radio DJ in the 70s and rubbed shoulders with bona fide rock stars like John Bon Jovi, Mick Jagger and Cliff Richard. That's right, she set up Perfect 10, 98.7 FM and runs the grand old dame of local vinyl stores, The Arctic. We're all very proud to have Belinda Sunshine as our pioneer city jo. We've got her here online today and so let's say hi to the inimitable, irrepressible Belinda Sunshine! Sunshine! Hi, Belinda! Hi, Belinda! Hi, Evelyn! And hi, Jared! <laughs> well, Belinda, how are you? You know, you have worked in radio for most of your life. So tell us, how are you adjusting to your new role as our City Joe, jo City Journalist? <laughs> wow! You know, the media landscape has changed so much these days. And one has got to be really internet savvy, you know, and also know what you have to do. So to take over this job as a city Joe, I find it not only daunting, but challenging. It's something very different from what I used to do years ago. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, so what, uh, what have you got for us this time around? Well, if you are talking about what programs I'm yes. doing, we do a variety of stuff. But this week, however, I'm doing this program called Street Talk. And Street Talk is a program where I really hit the streets talk to people on certain issues and uh, certain topics that are really very close to their hearts. It's very exciting and I enjoyed it. Mm, that's Beautiful. nice. So did you manage to get Singaporeans to talk to you on Street Talk? <laughs> yes, I do. But sometimes there are people who just refuse to talk to you. But those who are really ready to talk to you, they come forward and they say, Oh, are you beautiful in the sunshine? I'll talk to you. I'll share with you. So that was fun, really. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yes. But if you really want to know what exactly, you know, I'm going to do for this week. Yes. Well, it's something very interesting. Uh -huh. Something which is pretty close to the heart of all Singaporeans today. Okay. And if you want to know more, you better watch my story. Okay. We will do that. We all will right. do that. So we are all eyes and all ears for you, Belinda. Ever since COVID-19 set upon us, many of us are forced to work within the confines of our home. But are we clocking the same hours like our office colleagues? Our bosses may not think likewise. And then invariably they think, ah, I think I should give them a pay cut. Pay cut? I'll castrate him if my boss does that to me. My fellow City Joes and I will be walking the streets to find out what people think about this. Should people who work from home be paid less than people who work in the office. No, I don't think so. They should uh, be paid less because it's actually they are doing the same job. I work from home shouldn't be paid less because the number of hours that we are working for myself, I actually work longer hours. Work from home, right? Their workload actually tends to increase. Uh, the boundaries between like your workspace and home is very blurred. So there's no clear demarcation when to stop work. Do you feel that working from home should be paid lesser than working in the office? No, I think no matter where you are working, as long as the amount of work they are doing is the same, I think they should pay you the same. Unless their performance drop when they work at home, like they don't reply to emails, they don't really communicate, they can't be contacted through their phone. Work from home was also like a great way to have more, more productivity. productivity yeah. Would you work from home for less pay? For example, um, they say you can stay at home um, for five days in a week but then you get paid less would you do that i would actually but at the same time i wouldn't because i've i want to go out also i wouldn't take uh, any pay less whether it's working from home or working from office you can i hope not lah. rather not no definitely not no i i won't accept a lesser pay <laughs> i'm still waking up early i'm still on my laptop every morning working 12 p.m i still go eat lunch it's the same schedule i think it's unfair if my work is better I will want more pay. Bosses maybe sometimes may not trust their workers when they are working at home. Mm. So they probably want to plant some digital you know, devices mm. you know, at the home of their workers. 
Now, do you mind if your boss were to do that? Uh, yes, definitely. <laughs> if he doesn't trust me, then there's trust issues between me and my employer. If I got trust issues with my boss, then it's a bit hard for me to work for him. Wow. Wow. The privacy is very protruding and uh, I feel it's a bit uh, pressure. It's so stressful. I can't do that. Yeah. I'd rather work in a stress-free environment. I feel like I work better. No. No, no privacy, you know. No privacy, right? I think it's fine, uh, as long as you don't install a camera in my house. For example, if you are calling in for a meeting, you want to on your video, you need to on the video, I think it's fine. If you really need a monitor, then uh, put a ca the camera somewhere, not too much exposure. Then You don't mind? Yeah, I don't mind, then uh, maybe a, a desk and a chair can and a window. Then oh, that, I that was see. It. I see. Yeah, then uh, you really sit there and work. Uh. Because we don't we don't see our bosses, so they might be curious what we are doing. So uh, it's good to have an update, maybe uh, every week or, or or even daily. I'm okay with that, um, but not not to the extent where they have to monitor us throughout the whole working hours, lah. So I think for the boss, they should have trust in us for us to complete the works. Yeah, I agree as well. I think uh, trust and respect is very important among employer and employee. Whether you're working at home or whether you're working in the office. The boss just has got to be understanding and trust their workers. I'm Belinda Sunshine, City Joe on Singapore One. All right, thank you, Belinda, for the story. So we have come to the end of today's episode of SG Now. That's right. We hope that you have a great weekend ahead and do join us again next week for more happenings and gossips from our sunny island. Wait a minute. We don't do gossips here. We don't, you sure? Well, by the way, uh, Belinda was just telling me about, you know... Oh, but wait. Okay, see you next week. Bye. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>